Much of the western United States endured dense, choking, unhealthy smoke from millions of acres of burning forest land again during the summer of 2017. The fire season began soon after spring rains ended, and by the time the fall rains arrived in November, nearly 9 million acres had burned. Most of these fires started on and burned federal forest lands. Many spread uncontrollably onto private lands, threatening homes and in some cases, entire communities, resulting in thousands of people being forced to evacuate. Overgrown, crowded forests, the result of years of fire exclusion and severely limited harvesting, dead trees killed by insects or left from previous fires, dense brush and down wood on the forest floor offered ripe fuel conditions during hot, dry weather. Under these unnatural conditions, fires rapidly grow out of control. Once ignited, the heavy accumulation of fuels often burn for weeks on end. Heavy smoke blanketed entire communities, curtailing and even requiring cancellation of outdoor activities, including sports, concerts, theatric events, and other tourist activities. The most vulnerable, the young, the elderly, and those with chronic medical conditions were most adversely affected. For example, during the height of fire season, the Oregon Department of Environmental Quality issued the following warning, quote, this smoke is going to impact virtually everybody. Headaches, watery eyes, and scratchy throats could be early symptoms of overexposure to the stagnant, smoky air. The health effects could be much more serious for asthma sufferers and other sensitive groups. This is not something to mess with." Unquote. At the national level, the Center for Disease Control warns that prolonged exposure to fine particulate matter pollution present in wildfire smoke has been linked to increased emergency department visits and hospital stays for breathing and heart problems worsening asthma symptoms, low birth weights, decreased lung growth in children, and even lung cancer and early deaths. What makes wildfire smoke so hazardous to our health? Dr. Greg Huey from the Georgia Institute of Technology led a group of scientists to look at the hazardous particulates and chemicals that occur in wildfire smoke. The research used aircraft from NASA and the Department of Energy equipped with sensitive chemical and particulate detection equipment. The researchers flew the aircraft directly through plumes of smoke at three major wildfires, including the 2013 Rim Fire in California. The scientists published their peer-reviewed results in the June 14, 2017 Journal of Geophysical Research, Atmospheres. They found that wildfires send what is called fine particulate matter into the air at a rate three times higher than levels noted in emissions inventories at the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency. Those microscopic specks form aerosols in wildfire smoke that are a hazard to human health, particularly to the lungs and heart. Some of that particulate matter contains oxidants that cause genetic damage. They can drift for hundreds of miles into populated areas. The study also found many organic chemicals in the wildfire plumes, including methanol, benzene, ozone precursors, and other noxious emissions. And the researchers detected certain nitrates in smoke for the first time. Results of the study significantly raised the estimated annual emission of particulate matter in the western United States. Ecologists like Dr. Phil Higuera from the University of Montana and Dr. Paul Hesberg from the U.S. Forest Service tell us that fire is a natural part of our forest ecosystems, and as such, we should not hope to eliminate fire. Rather, they say we should manage fires by controlling the vegetation, the fuels, in a way that will change the fire behavior. Reducing the incidence of severe wildfires begins with properly managing our forests. These scientists recommend thinning forests to reduce their density and removing the understory ladder fuels that carry fire into the crowns of older trees. After that removal, controlled fire could be reintroduced into these areas, further reducing fine fuels to mimic the once natural, low-intensity fires that cleanse the forest floors of fuels without destroying the larger trees we want to keep on the landscape. These controlled fires, set during conditions which permit them to burn slowly, and when winds aren't likely to drive smoke into highly populated areas, are low-intensity fires. They generate less heat without damaging the soil and water, and more importantly, result in far less smoke with fewer hazardous emissions which dissipate quickly, minimizing toxic exposure to people and communities. 
Unfortunately, since any smoke creates concerns from the public, the state and federal regulations which limit planned burning are a major barrier preventing this practice from being used more often on forest lands. Yet ironically, the smoke from wildfires, despite being so much more hazardous and often lasting for weeks, is not regulated at all. We have a clear choice. We can continue the current policies of little or no active management and spending the majority of our federal forest budget on fighting wildfires while burning millions of acres of precious forests each year. Or, we can actively manage our forests to change the way wildfires burn by addressing and reducing the fuel loads in our forests, combined with planned and controlled burning. We know how to use fire on our terms, when and where we want to burn safely. For the safety of our communities and our citizens, as well as the health of our forests for future generations, it is time for us to address effective forest management and reduce the severe effects of wildfire. What can you do? Review the science about effective forest management and join the conversation. Contact your elected federal, state, and local officials. Share your concerns about the conditions of these federal lands and how they risk our health and our future. Future generations are depending upon you to get involved. For more information, visit us on Facebook at Communities for Healthy Forests.